what if only 20% of your tools, your techniques, or your time could dramatically elevate the quality of your tracks and decrease the time it takes to improve? A few years back, I was working on an album. I'd spend all day mixing the song, adding plugins, tweaking the smallest things, and then I'd play it in my car and it would still sound amateur. After weeks of pulling my hair out and toiling over a song that just never got any better, I reached out to a music production mentor to help me out. When they got their hands on the track, they took one listen to it. They took off almost all the plugins I put on, tweaked the volume a bit, and the craziest thing happened. My mix sounded better, more professional, tighter, and pretty much every other good adjective you could think of. And suddenly, it hit me. I was spending most of my time producing on the things that barely affected my sound. My mentor went on to explain a production mindset, and that has stuck with me to this day. It's called the 80-20 rule. It suggests that in many scenarios, 80% of your outcomes come from just 20% of your inputs. This is also known as the Pareto principle. For example, 20% of your songs might get 80% of your overall plays. Or for the musicians, 20% of your fans might leave 80% of the comments on your social media post. What if we applied that same idea to music production? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today, and we're going to dive in to six different ways on how this principle can help kickstart your music production career and help you learn it in record time. Tip number one. Focus on what matters. 80% of a song's impact will come from the song structure and melody. Here's a truth bomb. Spending five hours perfecting that one snare sound might feel like dedication, but if your melody sucks, no one's going to care about your snare drum. Time is a limited resource, my friends. Pour it into what will resonate. The song structure, the melody, a chorus that sticks. Those are the things that people latch on to. If the spine of your track is weak, those fancy details aren't going to do anything to help it. People listen to a song with the message that resonates, even if the mix is bad. Tip number two, understand volume. 80% of mixing is volume. Think of compression. We're essentially automating the volume of the loudest parts of the track. And EQ, we're adding or subtracting volume from different parts of the frequency spectrum. That's all mixing is, is volume. The most important plugin you'll use to mix is your fader. Loud sounds have more body, high end, and power, and softer sounds are more laid back, tame, and mellow. If you master the fader and you master the tools like compression and EQ, you'll be able to mix anything. Focus on those before moving on to some more creative effects, and you're going to save yourself a ton of time. Number three, good recordings and sound selection. 80% of your song's final sound is decided in the recording stage, not the mixing stage. God, I really wish I realized this sooner. If you get a recording of live instruments that fall short and fails to make your jaw drop, no amount of plugins will change that. The same goes for sound selection. If you're using stock, off-the-shelf VSTs that sound like my six-year-old nephew's $20 piano, chances are it will take away from your song's message. Get it right from the start. Tip number four, train your ear. 80% of your time spent as a beginning music producer will be developing your ear. The best producers in the world have a sound in their head and they know exactly how to get to it and make it come through their speakers. Amateur producers will spend 30 minutes trying to decide which frequencies to reduce in a vocal. Take the time to train your ear through active listening and music production as well to help bridge that gap as quick as possible. Instead of going into the EQ and just moving a frequency band around, try to pinpoint it before you make that decision and see if you can actually just hear it in your mind's ear before you do it. The more you do that, the better you'll get at training your ear. And it's one of the biggest differences between amateurs and pros. Tip number five is keep creating. 80% of the songs you produce will suck. If you think Stevie Wonder or Taylor Swift was writing amazing hits at the start of their career, just think again. They spent the time creating and honing their craft. Even musical overnight sensations have been grinding for years before any notoriety variety came to them. It's about consistently showing up, producing more, failing more, and refining more. Remember, Picasso didn't produce a masterpiece every time, but he sure as hell painted a shit ton. Tip number six, simplify your producing. 80% of the most popular songs are simple. Do you want to add track number 83 of the violin to your song? Your track probably just doesn't need it. Take Billie Jean by Michael Jackson. How many elements are really in that song? The track is propelled by a grooving rhythmic section and an iconic bass line, and that's really it. It's a smash hit, and 
and it's so simple. And if you start researching other songs that are smash hits, guess what? They're also simple. People relate with simple. Here's a quote from legendary producer Rick Rubin who shares the same philosophy. There is beauty in simplicity, and sometimes the most impactful songs are the ones with the fewest elements. You can know all the theories, all the tricks in the book, but if you're not ready to roll up those sleeves and actually produce music, you're not going to get better. You're just another musician with a fancy doll. Your musical journey isn't about shortcuts. It's about smart cuts. It's about identifying that 20% that really matters. So now that I've given you the layout for some of those items in the 20%, that 80% is going to come so much faster. If you like this kind of inspirational, motivational type of music production video, then please hit the like button down below. This is a little bit different than the videos I normally make, but I wanted to say this because it's been on my mind and I wanted to share it with you. And I have so much more to vomit out into your brains if you're willing to have it about the world of music production. Stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.